What's good, YouTube? Welcome back to Money Yachi TV, man. Today we got my guy Tommy G back with another one, man. Visiting the Chicago Trap House. Boy, what? what? Visiting the Chicago Trap House, man. Now listen, y'all actually been rocking with the Tommy G reactions, heavy man. Shout out my hometown, Milwaukee, man. Shout out Tommy G. He be firsthand in the trenches with it. Whether it be St. Louis, whether it be Milwaukee with the Kia boys, man, this man is doing it all. Salute to Tommy G's. We gonna see what this one all about. Let's get it. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Let's go. Man, man, trap House America with some Trap House niggas, man. It's crazy. News investigation tonight, the heroin epidemic. America's heroin epidemic. Heroin with a different color. Heroin. Fentanyl. Fentanyl pills. America's fentanyl crisis. Have you ever wondered what it's like inside a trap house? Well, I certainly have. Today, we're going somewhere in the- No, Tommy, I, I've, I've honestly never wondered what it's like inside of a trap house. I, it's never really crossed my mind to even be intrigued to even want to step foot inside of a trap house, but we gonna see. It's like inside a trap house? Well, I certainly have. Today, we're going somewhere in the United States, specifically not Milwaukee, and we're looking at a trap house. We're gonna talk to the fellas, see what the operation is like, and ask them questions. If you would like a big dog's gotta eat shirt or hat, it's on the website, tommygmcgee.com. Every human has their vices. I'm a simple man, I like ribeye steaks, I like reading a book before I go to sleep. But one of my vices is dipping, all right? If this is one of your vices too, I have something to recommend. I have this badass collection from Canada Dips. It's a CBD dip. When I go for road trips like I'm going on now, I pop one in, I feel good, I feel relaxed. A lot of the fighters I know, they love CBD products. It helps them with anxiety, it helps them sleep. They have the Humboldt collection. It's got flavors like ice cream cake, granddaddy purple papaya, blue dream, the stuff that we all know and love. 50% off, use the code DOPE, and get yourself one of these bad boys. When you're on a road trip, mm, listen to that music, Bruh. windows down, cruising. It's a beautiful thing. The link is in my description. Bruh. Check it out. It's and like, we... what, what can't this man do? Like, he got the little sponsor, he got the little business man with it. Hold on. We get all of the trenches with it real quick. Hold on. So, before we make a stop for the trap house, we're finding rubber gloves. I already have face masks, but it's extremely <laughs> important to me that I help keep these people's identity anonymous. They're letting me come to their place, see stuff that I really shouldn't be seeing on camera. And so it's my job as a journalist to keep them safe. All right, so... here we are. We're at that little pregame, little nerves, little butterflies cooking up in the stomach once i hit the first like 30 seconds of meeting this person when we show up to these places it's over i feel good when you're showing up to places that are the real deal it's just like whoa so we'll see you in a little bit come on bro yes sir so how often do you guys visit this place Fuck, man frequently he's got the best yeah how much does it cost a week to do what you guys do to run your habit 100 bucks a day between two of us yeah and how do you guys make that money to keep the habit going? We hustle, man. Work, I got work. a supply sign. I used to steal, but I got arrested too many times, man. I got Three going on that. I've been arrested 16 times. And when did you guys begin your journey into this? Uh, it's been, what, a couple years now? Mine's been about probably four or five. And is it something that you guys see going on for forever? I mean, I hope not. Like, what's a two-year plan for you? For right now, it's up in the air. I want to get my shit together, but it's a battle. You know yeah. What, I mean? what is this stuff here? Straight dope. This is I actually respect that, you know. Like, yeah, I mean, what, the, what they say on power, legal or illegal, I got to make it at the end of the day, man. Like, yeah, it's, it's, you really shouldn't be doing this. But, you know, you can't judge somebody's situation. You know, they got to hustle. They got to make ends meet. Like, not everybody can, not everybody can work the normal job, man. Like, people, some people exceed. You got to get in where you fit in. And this is, this is a very serious, very, very serious thing to get into, man. But, you know, as long as they see that it's not a forever thing, get in, get your bread, and get out, man. I mean, Eric, I want to get my shit together, but it's a battle. You know yeah. What, I mean? what is this stuff here? It's good, dope. This is good. Oh, is that, is that heroin? Oh, yeah. yeah. You got, is that shoot-ups? Is it smoke? How do you... Uh, have... you can shoot or snort it. Don't matter. We can shoot the whole process. Uh, what should be your comfort? Within a minute of getting there, they wanted to show me heroin fentanyl use. And so I will say, your discretion is advised. Some crazy stuff is about to happen. Oh, Timothy. 
Eric. So Eric, throughout an entire day, like how many people are, are coming in here and you're serving? Hundreds, hundreds of people. Hundreds? He's okay. the man around here. Yeah. Yes, sir. Can I trust him? No. <laughs> no. <laughs> she was too, y'all. Yeah. What was the, the first time that you said, this is what I'm going to do? Like, tell me about that moment. The first time you just said, I'm going to sit down and shoot up. You know what? It happened, the way it happened with me was uh, I got injured and uh, I was prescribed pills. And when they cut me off, I didn't have no money to afford it. Yeah. And this is the next cheapest thing to do. So you basically, know? you got hooked on big pharma stuff. You right, got from, legally. Legally, from, from an injury. And then since then, you've been looking for something else to help with pain management. Right. And then you got hooked on this. Because they cut me off clean and clear. How do you expect me to survive? And do anything you doctors been prescribing me stuff for three years what was the injury that set it off i tore my acl okay and this could this could be something that goes back to how this country is ran like okay we look at the pharmacy we look at what you know how much can you get with your medical insurance and like if you exceed that your medical insurance don't cover it you ain't gonna pay absurd amount of money for for this stuff that was once covered under your medical bills and all that stuff like you know what, what does the government expect people to do? Am I saying this right? No. But I'm saying like, you know, this country is it's sometimes you got to you, it's it's a man eat man world, man. Like you got to you got to survive. You got to stand on your own pretty much at the end of the day, man. And his way, you know, they cut him off from the legal stuff. So he might have to dapper in other stuff in order to keep doing what he doing to keep making his money. Three years. What was the injury that set it off? I tore my ACL. And how'd you do that? Uh, soccer. Let's I'm see. I'm a Navy vet, college grad, Western New York. Came out here with a girl. Shit, don't discriminate, man. Is second hand a real thing for this? Should I stay a little farther away? Mm -hmm. Okay. Oh, so this isn't. This is smoking it. Okay. What is that first hit like? It's a rush. The thing is, with this stuff, you always want more. You can't just not keep doing it. Yeah. You have to do it. You can't get out of bed in the morning if you can't do this shit, man. I can't function. You Struggling can't. You literally world. can't get out of bed, man. You want to get clean. You gotta. You gotta want to mentally do it. How powerful is that first initial buzz and rush? Uh, amazing. It's, yeah. It's, it's amazing. It's, euphoric. It's like being a virgin and having sex for the first time, man. My first time. Boy, boy, boy! Hold on now, that boy, boy. Euphoric. It's like being a virgin and having sex for the first time, man. My first time wasn't as fun as you might think. <laughs> What's the security look like here? There's dozens of people in and out of here. How does that go? You got watch out all the time. All the time. Sure. All the time. I've heard that's kind of structured like a McDonald's almost. Like you're the CEO. What are the, the roles you have in this business? A CEO, a vice president, and you got managers. You got people that work the, the service counter, you know, sell them uh, the cheeseburgers and shit. How do you fire someone that's not doing a good job here? Man, the ugly. Sometimes you get fucked up. So you basically say, like, you might beat their ass and then say, never come back here again? Yeah, some shit like that, yeah. Mm. Do you have to buy yeah, some Something like that. Some. Something like that. Bounce from spot to spot ever? Or do you? Yeah, we got a lot of them. We got a couple of them move around and get hot. I only fuck with him, man, because I always know it's legit. I can trust the hell out of him. You would say he's a good guy in some yeah. ways. Oh, yeah. And to get this amount that you just got, how much was that? 20 bucks right there. And that is that, will you come here again later today? <laughs> Damn straight. So basically, as soon as you get more money, you come right back. Correct. I guess have you ever felt bad for a customer? I mean, yeah, we human, but you know what? She bad. It's business. How'd you get started doing this? Tell me a little bit about your journey, like the cliff notes of your journey, how you're here today. Yo, I'm watching this shit, and it's like you just fall in, fall into the game. When was the first time you were in a trap house? Yeah, it was here. Probably like 10, 11, something. Hold on a second. Oh. 10 or 11 years old. I want us to wrap our head around how crazy that is. Think about what you were doing when you were in fourth grade, and I didn't even know what a trap house was, so that's crazy. It's like, I'm going to let y'all in a little personal <clears throat> thing about me. I don't know if anybody from my family see this. They probably won't like it, but, you know, it's what I experienced, you know. Growing up, I lived in the projects from probably the age of five up until the age of eight. And, you know, it was a lot of activity. You know, I lived with my great-grandmother, my aunties. They were hooked on this stuff bad. Like, they anything to catch a high and I love them you know RIP RIP one of my aunts other ones still alive but it's like you see 
stuff. You know, as a kid, you don't really like realize what's really going on. You don't see the the things that's going on and the, you know, what they're spending their money on, the people that's coming around, the death threats that you get. There was times when it would be dealers coming to the projects because my aunt forgot to pay them their money for their supply. It was times when I had to go upstairs to my great grandmother's closet, grab the shotgun out to give to her, not understanding what was going on. This is a serious, a serious thing. This was back in like 2001, 2000, 2000, 1999. It was up, it was back at that time. But it's like, I don't know. It's like seeing that stuff as a young kid. I can only imagine being in the environment of where it's being prepared, where it's, you know, it's going to kind of stick to your head. Like maybe I could do this. You start seeing your people make money. It's like in my, in my mind, I've always been a different kid than, you know, everybody else. So, you know, I seen the effect and the toll that it took on, you know, both of my aunts and my, my great grandmother, God rest her soul. Like she frowned down on it, man. But when this addiction is so serious, you know, it ultimately ended, ended up killing, you know, my, my aunt Beverly, you know, somebody gave her rat poisoning instead of what she wanted. And she was brain dead on the spot, died on the spot as she took it. And it's like I, I saw stuff like that and it scarred me to, to you know, stay away from that stuff because I did not want any part of that, man. And was it a friend? friend? Was it a family member? No, it was somebody else. I went to go try to hustle in there because I needed some shoes. What drugs do you personally do? Myself? Yeah. Shit, no. Do you drink? Do you smoke weed? Do you no, smoke no. cigarettes? I smoke a little weed. That's crazy. Now, but weed ain't no drug. Yeah. Do you drink coffee? No, hell no. Don't get high off your own supply. I feel like that was Never. in the Crack Commandments by Biggie. Never get high on your own supply. That's something that every real hustler takes to heart. <laughs> I mean, no offense, but it's hard to trust someone who's addicted because they'll do whatever they can to get it, right? Yeah. You know, some people that accept, you know, they can control it. You can give them a trial. Some people, you know. And they might get a little bit of product for what they do, yeah. or a little bit of money. Yeah, like that, yeah. Can you explain what's... You want to clean out the cut that's in that in case there is. You know, everybody shit's different. When you cook, you can boil out all the imperfections, the bacteria, all that. If you don't, you can get really sick instead of get better. You're prepping to shoot up right now? Yeah. What makes you decide to smoke it or shoot it? I smoke the crack, I, I shoot the dope. Right. You What you did first was smoke crack and then you're gonna shoot the dope. Yeah, if you get high off the crack. Come up, then come down. And then the dope brings you down back to a level. So are you making it into black tar right now? I see it's turning dark right now. No, no, that's just the color. That's basically the black what you see is basically the stuff you're trying to take out. How do you choose the part of your body that you're going to shoot in? Wherever you can find the vein. Yeah. So I got my brother. He always helps me uh, shoot because I, I, I shake too much. Is it hard to find a vein right now? Sometimes you can find a vein. Sometimes it can take you an hour. It looks like a not very comfortable process to, to do. Sometimes it ain't. See, now he's in the vein right now. You see that blood filling up. That's a good thing. He putting it in his leg. That's crazy. See, now he's in the vein right now. You see that blood filling up. That's a good thing. That's a good thing. Put it right on my hand. Yo. Right there. Two. So is this a direct hit right now or are we still yeah. looking? That's a direct hit. What he's getting right now. Direct. Going right through his vein. It's going to go right in, it'll be high within seconds. So this is one of the few moments of the day that you actually feel okay. Oh yeah. Well, see, after you do it in the morning, you feel normal. What a normal person feels when they get up and have breakfast and coffee. Right. Us, if we don't have this. In the morning? We don't function. No. To me, it's a little bit comical. You see this, this is crazy, but you said coffee is too crazy for you to put in your own body. Yeah. Why is that? It's not good for you, stun your teeth. Have you ever had to shut down shop? Do you ever have to lay low? It's always eyes watching. Them. Well, they can't see through these windows, I'll tell you that. So I notice there's blood going around. Do you ever worry about HIV from people, that your clients, your customers? No, I don't, I don't get that close to no blood. Is it rare that someone actually shoots up here? They usually do it outside? No. People do shoot up here. Yeah, this is, this is Does that make outside. it less dangerous for you? Because if they do it here, then they don't have to be caught outside with yeah, sometimes, yeah. Is this hard to watch for you at all? Like watch watching? This is real. Yeah. Why is the fridge, why is there a refrigerator here? I was about to, yeah, it's to block the door. I, was, I noticed that earlier in the video. I'm like, the first thing that came to my mind was like a young Jeezy lyric. Like, I'm making sure the door line. He put the, the fridge in front of the door by any means. Now, hold on. That's crazy. 
to block the door in case the police or someone try to bust through it or something. And now, a Q&A with a trapper. We're doing rapid fire questions. Your questions that you messaged me on Instagram. Let's roll the tape. You ready? Yeah, let's roll. This episode has been brought to you by Candidates. Use code DOPE for 50% off their Humboldt collection. Do you file taxes? Code DOPE. So do you Have you ever taxes? had a job outside of trapping? No, oh, I never had a job in my life. How much weight is moved daily or weekly or monthly? However you want to answer that question. That's two points. What's your family situation? Do you have kids? Do you have a girlfriend? I don't have kids yet. Mom, I wouldn't raise no kids in this environment. How do you deal with the constant stress? He said, I wouldn't raise no kids in this environment. You know, <clears throat> I respect the accountability. I do. And it's like, you know, like I said, this is not anything good that you should even be in. Like, obviously, you know, we, we know that. But, you know, at least he see, like, I would never, even though he was in trap houses around 10 or 11, he said, I would never bring my kids into this environment. That's, yeah. How do you deal with the constant stress of always having to watch your back? This is from Aiden Hansen. Do you have a trap queen? <laughs> Hell, uh, Do you read books? Hell yeah. Well, what are your, some of your favorite books? Like 40 years old. I read Donald Trump biography. That motherfucker's decent. Art of the Deal. If you had to choose something else to do, what would it be? <laughs> I'll be you, nigga. <laughs> You'd be doing YouTube? I'll be doing Talk to G show. Yeah. <laughs> How much school did you go through? I went to high school. I ain't going go no further. Did you think about going to college? No, I don't know. Were you already doing this by the time you graduated high school? Have you ever been robbed by a homeboy? No, I had a homeboy steal from me. Yeah. I robbed, steal from me. And what was that like? Shit, that shit hurt. You just see it. When there's like a close homeboy that thing, you just gotta move on. You know what I'm saying? You just can't fuck with me no more. You don't want to hurt him because y'all are too close. You know what I'm saying? Would you consider yourself to be a good person? Hell yeah, I'm a great person. Yeah. So there's, there's some people, like, if you grew up listening to Young Jeezy, people view hustlers as kind of like the man, right? right? Other people think hustlers are total animals, bad guys. What do you say to those people? Man, hell no. Everybody hustle, you hustle some, you gonna say they bad. So if the government made drugs legal, how would that impact your business? What would you think about that? Shit, it won't be wrong, because we legal, motherfuckers still sell that, and the government shit don't always be weak. They don't really know how to do that shit like we know how to do that shit. What do you I got a question for y'all. I don't smoke. I don't smoke at all. <clears throat> at all. I don't do none of that. For those of you that smoke, like, do y'all go to, like, the cannabis shops? And if y'all do, would y'all say that it's better than what you can get from the plug? Or do you think that is is like he said, like, do they not know what they doing up in the cannabis shop, man? I need to ask Don about this. I know Hollywood Don, though. But it's like, I've always been curious about that. I'm like, yeah, it's legal now. And like, yeah, they build these cannabis shops. There's like a ton of them here where I live. And it's like, I don't know. Like, are they still as good as getting it from the plug? It, 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 does it still hit? Does it still, does it hit you with that slugger when you take it? Now, hold on. What do you think about the war on drugs? Man, it's, it's a war on people. It ain't a war on drugs. They locking up people. Facts. Yeah. They ain't locked up nobody to sell drugs because shit, we don't grow this shit. We don't make this shit. They bring it on here and give it to us. They lock us up for it. Who's they? The government. The government. No black man got no poppy fields. The government. No COVID, no copa fields in the ghetto. The government. I don't see no gun factories in the ghetto. Oh, shit, that shit, yeah. All the drugs come in, they come from the government, bro. So some people look at Eric here and say, he's a bad dude, he's one of the worst people in society, he's filling the streets with drugs. What do you think about that? I don't think that at all. It's their choice to buy. He's different there. He cares. He, he's a guy that cares. He what does. what makes him a guy that cares? What How does he show that he cares for you? Because he's a good dude and he takes care of you. He don't treat me like I'm lower than life, like a lot of people. How many places like this are there in a walk from here? 30. 30? 30. So it's loaded. You can go to every block, man. Wow. So guys, what are we about to see right now? And so what are we looking at right now? What is this? We're picking the crystal out to snort it?
Woo! So we're back on the road, folks, and I'm pretty much enjoying being in my car right now after being in a situation that just was, I mean, the gentlemen were nice, but holy shit, I mean, it's something that could go south any time. Yeah. I'm interested to hear what you guys think in the comments about what you just saw. I've never seen any, been anywhere near drugs like that in my entire life. And it's hard to say what a bad person is. It's hard to say what a good person is. You know what I mean? Use code DOPE, D-O-P-E, get 50. That's crazy though, I don't know. What y'all What y'all feel about that though? It's, I ain't gonna lie, the video is a little eerie. Like it, it kind of got a little real, you know, and they, they shooting up and they, man. I'm surprised he was able to post this on YouTube, but dang, that's crazy though. You know, I've never, I never seen the, the full process like on video. I never really even, like I said, I never wondered about it. But um, you know, I have seen the effect that it, it that it has on people. I've seen the addiction. I've seen you know, the the tragic side of this stuff too, man. But you know, that's crazy. Visiting the Chicago trap house from Tommy G. Link down below in the description for y'all to check this video out in its entirety and all of Tommy G's content in their entirety, man with no interruptions. Y'all new to the channel, y'all rock with me, want daily reaction videos, hit that subscribe button for me to the next video. I'll see y'all then. Thank you for watching Money Yachi TV. I'm out.